my name is Jeremiah Johnson. I'm a, I'm a resident here at the uh, Pajama Factory. Uh, I've got a studio space uh, down in Building 10. And uh, I'm a visual artist. Um, I'm originally from this area. I've been involved with the Pajama Factory ever since one night I went to the Bullfrog and ran into Michael Pilato there and he told me about this, uh, about some guy who bought this building. Uh, it used to be the Racetown building and uh, from New York City and was uh, looking to section off space and get artists to uh, move in uh, dirt cheap to nothing for rent and uh, you know build their own spaces out of it. Got the idea, got this dream idea to create a large print studio, um, take up a huge amount of the space and I was looking for the space that was the most well finished already. Um, hey, all it needed was lighting and uh, start, a, start a big uh, cooperative print studio there. Um, at the time, but uh, that was a lot of risk involved and I didn't want to take out loans to do it because I knew it would be, uh, you know, hand to mouth on that idea, uh, putting a lot of time into it and, uh, you know, just basically struggling to get it by. Uh, so I backed off the idea and um, ended up subletting, the next summer I ended up subletting a space out of uh, another tenant, Natalie Turry. She had an extra space when she moved to uh, open up a retail space downstairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, that she wanted to sublet, so I took it over for the summer and just started teaching art classes in there to keep the rent going for the space. Uh, I think it's been like three years now uh, hmm. since that's since I had that space, and uh, um, I only did it over the summer, and uh, so I left that space behind and then moved back in a year later uh, after they got spaces set up in the place uh, and actually. Uh, that was after the uh, after. Just. Mark? To, Yep. Uh, yep. Just after Mark uh, pretty much took over the whole space, and uh, and then they renovated the second floor. Before that, I was working in my basement, and um, I I'm in a gallery in New York, and uh, sold the two largest paintings that I ever made, which I made in my apartments. And uh, since I've uh, become a family man, I ended up working in the basement of my uh, house that I live in. And uh, it only has a six foot ceiling, or, and uh, so uh, I could only make pictures that were six feet tall. Um, at the most, and uh, the lighting was poor down there, but um, you know, I made it work as long as it did. And I needed to expand and make larger pictures after some of those, the two largest ones that I ever made. One was nine feet by seven feet, the other one was uh, six by eight feet. Um, yeah, so that's that's sort of been a uh, it's been a more open ex uh, influence on the work. The work's gotten a bit more open instead of being so darked and confined before that. Yeah, uh, that's what it sort of does for it. What about having? The print studio down the hall and the ceramic studio across oh, yeah. the hall. And are you using those much? I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, printmaking, um, yeah. Uh, so Chad Andrews, a friend of mine actually, um, who I was originally going to partner up with to set up his print studio, got one set up. Uh, mainly he, he jumped ahead because he got a, some really nice donations uh, through Michael Plato and the Public Art Academy uh, and also uh, Bloomsburg University. Uh, some very nice printing presses uh, for free, which would have uh, which would have been a main chunk out of our budget uh, when we were first figuring it out. We'd, uh, uh, estimated roughly fifteen thousand dollars to get some presses going. Yeah. Uh, but um, he got two really nice presses, and uh, that happened uh, just before I got a studio space up there. So it was, uh, you know, quite appropriate that I could uh, work in my own space as well as uh, start printing again. Um, I, I even though I went to school for printmaking, um, I uh, I would only I only have access to printing uh, facilities anytime I actually. Uh, uh, you know, get to teach at a different university or college or something like that. Uh, it's not the sort of thing you can buy and drag home and put in your living room. They, yeah, they yeah, definitely not. Uh, Printmaking is not your main thing, though. Uh, is it uh, no, it's well over the years. It's only taken part of the work. Um, I knew that I would be without printing presses for some time, and so I, um, I tend to, uh, well, I. I tend to fill my time with drawing and painting, a uh, combination of both, mm -hmm. uh, in between one to the other. And uh, but ideally, I I tend when when I get a chance to start printing again, I, I usually uh, take more active role in printmaking uh, as a part of that. Because printmaking, right. what it does that drawing and painting can't do is it uh, it uh, changes. The way you the way you see your own image that you make, uh, like mm -hmm. if you if you do a drawing, it's the way you made it. Uh, the same with a painting. You make a painting, it's the way you want it to look. Uh, the only way you can you know 
if you close your eyes and make the painting, then something else happens. But other than that, it's it's the way you envision it in your head. Well, when you when you create a print, uh, the way you envision it in your head is not always the way it turns out uh, in the print. Uh, for first of all, uh, it reverses the image and uh, a lot of times, but also the material of working with it, it completely changes the way you look at the uh, at the uh, image you're painting or the uh, way you're, you're the way you're making the work. Yeah. That's why I, when I do prints, I try to use the most uh, um, strange materials as possible. Like um, uh, lithography uh, tends to look like drawing and mimic drawing. And uh, if you, why would you want to mimic drawing when you can actually just make a drawing? So I tend to uh, like printmaking, like uh, relief printing or intaglio, uh, particularly relief because um, when you're inking up a block of wood and making a drawing on a block of wood and, and carving that piece of wood out, mm -hmm. uh, once you put it to the paper, uh, the, you've got to give something up to the material you're using that you're actually printing on. So uh, therefore, if there's knots in the wood, they get in the middle of your drawing and uh, uh, mm. the, you can't do anything about the wood grain. Uh, you're slightly helpless to the process in a sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've been here probably as long, almost as long as anybody here. I mean, how, what's, um, what's your impression of how the place is changing as, as, as the place fills up and people... Oh, well, every every year it's been getting better and better. Uh, from the first two years, it's been kind of you know it was pretty empty around here. Nobody knew what was going on. Nobody wanted to be a part of what was going on. The first two years, that was uh, when it was just a raw space. Uh, it's very dirty. There was still asbestos on the second floor that they were removing. And um, uh, nobody re was really sure of where it was going or what was going to happen. There was no uniformity to it, uh, in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might have uh, somebody having one space here, another space over there. Uh, all these random spaces, no signs up, no promotion about it. Um, in a sense, it was just too haphazard. Um, I don't think they were connected with First Fridays at the time or even having art openings back in the early days. Um, generally you just kind of get people randomly showing up and the most uh, visitors that came to the factory at the time were for the Eagle Rock Winery mm. uh, which was one of the first places in here uh, and she had to really do a lot of work to bring people over here she uh, pretty much got on the c trolley committee so she could use the trolley to <laughs> bring people from the Genetti Hotel yeah. over a lot of times uh, during the day and uh, but since then it's really expanded quite a bit uh, so once they got the second floor finished it really just took off like crazy. Uh, people were snatching up spaces when as quick that? as they could. Uh, that was uh, two years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. A lot of other events that sort of happened as well along with that. Uh, once they also got the second floor spaces, uh, the Public Art Academy did an artist in residency program, had uh, 12 artists come in, and that only helped to uh, further, uh, yeah. you know, make the... We talked about that, that, that every time they do an artist in residency, I guess this summer is the third? Uh, yes, this coming summer would be the third. Yeah. Yep. Um, they seem to get, uh, you know, one or two people stay each time, you know. <laughs> they bring in ten people and then one seems to stay. We had Becky. Yeah, had, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, this was a third after. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so. they, they, you know, we, we get some percentage of that become part of the community. Absolutely. And the last one we got, Penny. Of course, the hall. Who, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Penny Young, uh, she came from, uh, surprisingly, from L.A., Los Angeles, to uh, yeah. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Uh, she, she's an interesting one because she's, um, well, not only got married, um, she, uh, out here, to someone she met on the program, she, um, she and her husband bought a house in the neighborhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and with uh, Matt Parrish, bought a house down the street. Uh, you look, what an interesting one. I talked to Matt Parrish yesterday, and now I think you can see his old apartment from your studio. Uh, his old apartment? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. right over there, and he moved over here not knowing that the factory was anything. And now uh, he's, you know, a tenant and uh, uh, using, using the place as some kind of base creatively. Uh, which is interesting to me. You know, it's... Yeah, the factory itself is a place to have, uh, you know, your uh, visions and your dreams to somewhat uh, materialize in a sense. Uh, it makes it easier for a lot of people that don't have any money to put down on uh, starting their own small business and so forth. It, 
uh, gives them a chance to be able to do that, to have that opportunity. Uh, the first thing you need in any business is just generally having space. And right here you get, get as much space as you want. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing we do have. Uh, yeah. I think another 250,000 square free available or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, do you think people in town understand this place or what happens here? or? Uh, I, I think they're beginning to understand. It's, it's uh, something that still takes some time. People around it, the town, you know, they're uh, generally William Sports not up for a lot of change usually. Uh, there's been a lot of changes happening lately, but uh, um, it's, it's from the people. It's a yeah. direct, uh, you know, it's what we want. It's we're, we're trying to make the best of it here. Uh, people that graduate from college uh, want to, uh, they don't want to leave from home or have to go to large cities anymore to get jobs and to, you know, survive on. Uh, they'd rather be uh, set up in their own community. Uh, you know, that way they can take care of their parents in their older ages. And uh, right. um, That's why I'm back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I know I, I'd go crazy if I hadn't found this place. And I found it, um, I think it was six days after I moved back from Japan. Yeah. And I didn't know what to expect. And I, I, I came in, I found this, like, amazing place that I always say it has no business being in this town because my my ideas about the, the town's artistic sense were formed and was formed in the uh, early 80s when uh -huh. I left yeah. and it was the mall was new and downtown was dead and dying and Millionaire's Row seemed to be uh, succumbing to becoming halfway houses and, and student housing and yeah. I came back and it's it's beautiful. Yeah. And, and then at the end of that is this uh, this factory that, that I'd expect to see in uh, uh, you know in Brooklyn somewhere. Yep. That artistically you know is it's really happening. But but um, what do you what do you think is going to happen with this place? Do you think it's going to be uh, get known? Uh, beyond our borders, and, or maybe yeah, it's it's already it's already, known. It's already starting to spark interest. I mean, we're 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 already getting a, a little bit of a you know a little bit of a known nationally just uh, for simply having an artist in residency program here. People came here, they said, yeah, I spent some time in Williamsport, and then everybody's like, what Williamsport, Pennsylvania? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I think it's really been kind of helping that out. But uh, in a sense, uh, the, the factory has been just generally creating culture uh, beyond what uh, uh, the rest of Williamsport is doing. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's creating a little more. It's, uh, you know, it's creating a foundation for the culture, in mm -hmm. a sense, uh, to keep growing. Uh, uh, before, they didn't really have that. Uh, you know, it's like uh, people. Uh, people's ideas of uh, art was small and based on your, you know, your desk and something you did when you came home from work and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the factory's helping to make that larger, uh, larger, larger than that. Well, I always, I always felt when I was young that if I was going to do something creative, I had to leave, you yeah. know, and go to somewhere where creative things were happening. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I would really hesitate to go anywhere. Uh, there's nowhere I could touch that, uh, go to that, that I could uh, get this kind of space at this kind of price and yeah. still have this amazing creative community here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all just, uh, it's all just started on its own um, in a sense. Uh, there's certain things that I brought back with me when I came back to, when I moved back to Williamsport uh, from Philadelphia. Uh, it, it was like. Um, uh, just uh, different things like um, I wanted to, I like electronic music, There's there was absolutely none of that happening here when I left mm -hmm. and uh, um, none of that even happening here when I came back really that I knew about and uh, still there's just very tiny little pockets, one, two, three people, that's it. Yeah. And uh, so I got sort of uh, frustrated about that so I went out and bought some DJ equipment and started making my own music and uh, playing it on the Lycoming College radio station. You're also doing a show for the radio station that has its, got its birth here, I guess. Yes, yeah, yeah. WXPI 90, 90 or 88.5. Uh, it's uh, just started this year. Um, uh, it's, a, uh, it's our first community radio station. It's mm -hmm. actually run by the community. Uh, in a sense where uh, it, it, anyone that's uh, DJs can create their own programs uh, through it, uh, as well as uh, other news programs that aren't getting played in this area. 
uh, certain things like that. Uh, that's one of the things that has happened as well. Um, another thing that uh, happened right here at the Pajama Factory was there's no independent filming filmmaking going on or any any good independent films being played in Williamsport, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was something we also got started here. I was also frustrated about that working for an independent film uh, or distributing company down in Philadelphia for a while. Um, you know, it's like I knew that I was coming back to nothing in, in that realm of yeah. uh, movies and so forth. And I've already ex amounted a collection of my own of about 200 films. So I uh, uh, just started a movie night here at the factory every Wednesday nights. You know, you were one of the first people I met here. And uh, you kind of helped define the place for me. I mean, you know, I, I can't imagine the place without you being here, without Chad being here. And I met Bo the first day. Uh, my goal in this is to make people understand it, you know, because it's you have First Friday, which is a atypical night yep. at the factory, and then you have uh, if you were to come here, you'd find a lot of closed doors. People working do that, so I think it's important to document what's going on here. And, and yeah, yeah, find out what's going on behind those closed doors. That's exactly. Important. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, to me, I th I look at it as a regular factory space, a regular uh, business office in a sense. That's how I define my own space within the place itself. It's uh, a yeah. more of just a studio in a sense. Yeah. Other than that, it's, it's uh, basically a place to work. So I usually come in here, so try to do a nine yeah. to five, and uh, get some real work done. It's it's the only thing I really like doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, the best thing you can get after leaving college if you went to school for all of this. Once you're out of it, uh, there's nothing unless you get connected into a find your community. So if you, if you um, let's say an old friend from school calls you out of the blue and says, hey, you're up in Williamsburg, what are you, what's this pajama factory? Oh yeah, about? I always tell them everything about it. I try to get people from uh, you know from uh, school and so forth. Try to bring them up here. Uh, so I have this friend from Pittsburgh, and every now and then he's worried about money and so forth. And I'm like, well, hey, you love fishing, you love uh, you know you love the outdoors and all that sort of stuff. Um, why don't you uh, you know you can set here and you're 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 centrally located between Pittsburgh, New York, and Philadelphia. Being sort of in that set location, you're kind of a uh, in, in easy connect with all three places. Those are the ideals about it and uh, you know really I just want to bring everything to my own place. <laughs> bring it around me. That's ideally yeah. what we want is all of our friends to be around us forever 